Welcome to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast, where you will find all the inspiration you need to begin living a more intentional life today. Because no matter where you are right now in life, it's never too late to dream big, my friend. And now here's your host, Francis Vitakovic. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Dream Big My Friend podcast. This is your host, Francis Vitakovic, and today's episode is a great one because I'm going to give you another sneak peek into my brand new book, When Your Worst Enemy Is You, How to Finally Get Out of Your Own Way. So if you have ever felt as if the person that's holding you back in life is not other people, not your parents, not your family, but you know deep down that it's you, then this is a book that you absolutely need to check out because when your worst enemy is you, it will help you uncover 35 ways that humans stand in their own way and will show you exactly how to manage your own mind when facing these obstacles. My one and only goal in this book is to help you become your own best friend rather than your own worst enemy. And I show you exactly how to say goodbye to those self-sabotaging tendencies once and for all so that you can finally get out of your own way and try Really live a life that makes you feel content and purposeful, intentional and happy. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite chapters, which is all about when you think that your past predicts your future. So this is where I have to share with you that when you think this, when you think that your past is predicting your future, you are your own worst enemy because the truth is it's the things that you do today that hold the most power. So let's talk about how allowing your past to predict your future actually shows up in your life. It's when you keep repeating the stories of your past as if they're the truth, as opposed to your own version of events events that have been colored by the lens of your own unique perspective. It's when you insist on playing the role of a victim rather than the hero. You want to be the hero of your story, not the victim. It's when you think that one failure means that you're destined to fail every single time thereafter. It's when you think that you aren't capable of success because you don't see evidence of it in the present moment. And I think that we've all been here before. Have you ever noticed yourself using your past as proof of why you can't achieve new things in the future? If so, it's time to nip that attitude, that negative self-sabotaging tendency in the bud. So why do we even think this? Why do we think that our past predicts our future? Well, the strong attachment that you feel to the past is perfectly normal for several reasons. One, our past experiences form the backbone to our memories. And these memories, these memories that we've grown up with, help us better understand ourselves, the world, and how relationships work. Number two, these lessons from our past provide us with data, data that we can use to analyze and dissect our personal strengths and weaknesses and make assumptions about our abilities and future prospects. Now, generally speaking, humans conclude that they're good at something because of ABC experiences, something that you've experienced in your own life, and you assume that you're not so great at something because of these other XYZ experiences. Now, over the years, we've gathered plenty of data and this information based on our experiences in the past lead us to form particular conclusions about our potential. It's like we're almost scientists in a lab drawing conclusions that make perfect sense to us. Like we've got these experiences, we've experienced them ourselves, and these experiences confirm, they confirm our assumptions and often our worst fears to be true. The only issue with this process, okay, when we're acting like a scientist in this way, is that we aren't actually neutral by standards when it comes to making these assumptions. Instead, we often look for evidence to confirm what we believe to be true in advance and we ignore the rest. So surprise, surprise, like when you actively go out looking for evidence, you get the results that you are after. And this makes us very biased when it comes to our results analyzing and the evaluation of our abilities and skills. So in other words, if you go looking for the crap in your life, you're always going to find the crap in your life. Whereas if you go looking for the good in your life, you will always find the good in your life. And just so you know, everyone's life has both the crappy parts and the good bits, but which parts are you focusing on when you choose to think about your past? And if you have big dreams for yourself, I think that we all secretly do. I don't want you to be constantly looking backwards for what's possible, especially if you're going to be focusing on the bad bits. Seriously, our past is never a good predictor of our future success. Do you want to know why? Because your past results only reflect the thoughts that you were thinking back then. And if you had really crappy thoughts back then, then your results would have been crappy too. And personally, I don't care what's happened in your past. I only care about what you are focused on achieving in the future. And you can start a new today and go forth and chase your dreams without letting it matter one bit, one bit what your past was like it seriously does not matter if your results were crappy in the past all that tells me is that your thinking needed some tweaking and if you desire great things in your future and you felt like this was missing in your past of course you're not going to find the answer the answer to change in your past this is because if you were capable of achieving massive results with your old sort of thinking you would have already done it by now but you haven't 
So that means that just means that it's time to stop looking backwards at your old ways and embrace something new, a new way of thinking. To pay close attention, really close attention to what I'm about to say right now, the best indicator of your future success right now is the thoughts you are currently thinking inside your own head. Seriously, that is it. If you think that your future is bright, you're going to create that particular result, an amazing result. Whereas if you think that your future is doomed or it's like really crappy, you're going to create a pretty gloomy, crappy result. No matter what your past looks like, it all depends on what you're thinking right now. It really is that simple. So let me show you how to apply this strategy to your own life. So the alternative option that you have up your sleeve is know that your future is dependent on what you do today. And this is where I want to remind you, and I always talk about it on this podcast, the cognitive model. Your thoughts are going to impact your feelings, which are going to impact your actions, which are going to impact your results. So ask yourself now, what results do you want to create in the future? So be really specific here. And next, ask yourself, what would your future self do to create that result? So to achieve your big goal, how would you need to be thinking differently? What would you be doing differently? How would you be spending your days? How would you be feeling? Describe to me the life of the best version of your future self. Put simply, your future is entirely dependent on the thoughts you are thinking today, the feelings you're feeling today, and the actions you're taking today. So I want to transport your mind to the future right now. Let's revisit that future version of yourself who's sitting there totally giddy with joy and super proud that they kept on going when times were tough and never gave up on themselves. What words of advice would you whisper to you today? I want you to listen to her words, listen to her advice. It is gold. That voice, this voice you actually have inside of you is always going to guide you down the right path and in the right direction. I want you to trust that this is true. So here are the thoughts that I want you to ditch whenever you think that your past predicts your future. The first is this, my version of the past is true, but it's only your truth. What if it's actually neutral and your version or story can be reframed in a different way? I want you to also ditch the thought, I failed in the past, so I will fail again. But what if you're not failing? What if you're actually learning so much and growing and evolving from these past experiences? And I want you to also ditch the thought, everyone tells me that I can't do it. But that's okay. The only voice that truly counts is your own. And what are you telling yourself? It truly doesn't matter if everyone tells you that you can't do it if you tell yourself that you can. And the final thought that I want you to ditch is I'll never get over what happened in the past. You won't ever get over it if you keep on fondling this past story where you're the victim. What if you could gain strength from those past experiences and see yourself as an unstoppable worry instead? Okay, that is a choice you have. You can decide that your past was always working for you rather than against you. And here are the thoughts that I actually want you to embrace instead. I want you to say to yourself on a consistent basis, these thoughts, the past exists only as sentences inside my own head while the future lies inside my hands. Remember, you are the captain of your own ship. You are the master of your own domain. My past has no power over me unless I choose to give it power. And I can't start a new chapter in my life if I'm constantly rereading the past one and looking backwards. My future only depends on what I do in the present moment. I'm not looking backwards, only forwards. I'm leaving the past in the past. My future is a gift and better things are coming my way. And that, my friend, is a sneak peek into my new book, which is called When Your Worst Enemy Is You, How to Finally Get Out of Your Own Way. In this book, I'm going to show you, teach you exactly how to get over the most common ways that we self-sabotage ourselves. There's actually 35 things on this very long list. And this book covers when we self-sabotage ourselves, we fear, we doubt, we procrastination, with conformity, with failing to set appropriate boundaries, when we're not honest with ourselves, when we settle for good enough, when we avoid failure actively actively avoid failing it's a crazy thing it's also when we play it safe we are self-sabotaging ourselves it's when we resist change when we fall prey to distractions when we consume crap and play it small and don't have our own back and when we give up ahead of time when we feel guilty angry when we have these perfectionistic tendencies when we speak to ourselves critically when we stay constantly busy rather than being productive when we feel jealous or envious or we experience worry on a consistent basis this book also covers when you're constantly avoiding decisions, when you're holding on to limiting beliefs and bad habits, when you're failing to take responsibility for your life, when you assume you're always right, when you maintain toxic relationships, think everything that needs to be super hard, when you don't ask for help, expect people to change, feel constantly offended or care too much what other people think. In a nutshell, this book covers it all. And if you think that there's even just a tiny chance that you might be self-sabotaging yourself, that you might be your own worst enemy, I encourage you to go and check out the book right now. It's on Amazon. It's called When Your Worst Enemy Is You, How to Finally Get Out of Your Own Way. And you can purchase it as either an ebook or a paperback. Go out and do it right now. That is what I'm encouraging you to do. As always, take care, my friends. You know, I love and appreciate you all. And until next time, dream big, my friends.
Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really loved it, you can show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. For more inspiration, head over to dreambigmyfriend.com where you will find even more content for all the dreamers out there. Until next time, dream big, my friends.